Okay, welcome to part one of lesson 3.3. We're going to be talking about performing function operations and composition. So we've done quadratic operations, we've done polynomial operations. Remember, operations just means the four basic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So let's take a look a little more in depth. So here are the basic rules for creating new functions. If I'm going to combine two functions, that creates a new one. In this case, we're calling it h of x. So what are the rules to do that? Well, again, we want to focus on order. When we're adding and subtracting functions, especially um, with subtraction, we need to focus on the order. Notice that g of x is always represented at first in parentheses. And then we have to go through the appropriate steps before we just drop the parentheses. So for subtraction, that means we have to distribute that negative. When we're multiplying, follow the rules of distribution. And then when we're dividing, all we're really looking at is simplifying. We're not going to go through polynomial division uh, like we did in Chapter 2, but what we're looking at is are there any things, any steps we can take in order to simplify. Now when we create these new functions, these h of x's, we also want to consider what does this change for the domain of our graphs? So remember that domain represents all of the x values for which there would be an accompanying y value. So for our examples, addition, subtraction, multiplication, each function, each f of x function and each g of x function, whatever you put in for x, you're going to get a y value. So there is no limitation. So the domain represents all real numbers. Now for the division, the only thing we have to be concerned with is our new function we need to make sure that the denominator does not equal zero. So for division, the domain would be all real numbers except x can't equal negative two. If x is equal to negative two, that makes the denominator zero, which means that this is no longer a number. So we're restricted there, but everything else would work fine. Just that's the only restriction, and so we put what that restriction is. We always want to make sure we include that. This will make sense with some examples, so let's take a look at some examples. All right, so f of x is going to be equal to negative 3 times x to the 1 third, and g of x is going to equal negative x to the 1 third. So let's take a look at how this is going to do. Example A wants us to add these. So negative 3 x to the 1 third plus negative x to the one-third. To make that x look more like x. Alright, all we need to do is recognize that, okay, it's a variable expression. I need to make sure that the variables, the letters, are the same and that the corresponding exponents are the same. These are both x to the one-thirds, so I can go ahead and add the coefficients. So I have a negative three here and I have a negative one here. So just add those together and we get negative four times x to the one-third. So that is what h of x, our new function, is going to be equal to. Now for part b, so this is part a, part b, we're subtracting. So I have negative 3 x to the 1 third minus negative x to the 1 third. So following our rules, when we subtract, we always add the opposite, so this becomes plus positive x to one-third. So again, make sure the variables are the same. x to the one-third, x to the one-third, we're good there. So negative three plus positive one would be negative two. So our new function, when I add the two functions together, becomes negative two times x to the one-third. All right. Let's clear that off and take a look at our next example. It helps when you think you've pushed the mouse button in. There we go. So now we're going to multiply and divide. I'm going to change the color. That green was a little hard to see. Let's go with blue. So when we multiply, so we're just taking f of x, which now we have said is 2 times x squared, and we're going to multiply this by x to the 1 half. 
So basically, this is like saying 2 times x squared times x to the 1 half. Well, we already know that when we're multiplying powers, if the bases are the same, we just add the exponents. So we're adding 2 plus 1 half. But we're going to replace this with 4 over 2, because we want to have common denominators. So 2 times x to the 5 halves. I'm not distributing that 2, right? The 2 only is being multiplied by everything else. It's not attached to the 2. It's not 2x squared. It's not just, the square doesn't go with the 2. It's 2 by itself. So put it off in front and then bring it back at the end so we don't accidentally distribute it. I think a number of, uh, of times we tend to forget that part. And this is, of course, represented by h of x. Now, when we're dividing, set up our division. So 2x squared over x to the 1 half. Just like with multiplication, when we divide powers, we want to make sure the bases are the same. And if they are, we're going to subtract the exponents. So 2 is none. Again, it's not part of that x squared. It's separate. So it's going to stay by itself. There's nothing for it to be simplified by. I'm going to replace this 2 with 4 over 2. Since I'm subtracting fractions, I want to make sure I have common denominators. So 4 halves minus 1 half would give me 3 halves. So x to the 3 halves, and then the denominator is canceled out. So this simplifies to 2 times x to the 3 halves. And that would be our final answer. Again, thinking back to originally, x to the 1 half, the square root of x, we want to make sure that x cannot equal 0. So the only restriction on the domain we have here is that x can't equal 0. Because originally, even though we simplified away, it was still part of the original function. We want to make sure that we don't ignore that. So whatever would make that denominator equal 0, which in this case is only 0, we need to make sure that x does not equal You have the same functions, f of x is 2x squared and g of x is negative 3x squared. Go ahead and try all four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And think about what's going to happen to the domain of the new graph. What is h of x going to be restricted to, if anything? Once you've paused this and you've answered the questions, go ahead and hit play again and proceed to the next slide so that you can see your answers. So here are your answers for the four questions. Take a moment to check them. Make sure you have, if you have any questions, circle them and make sure you ask about it in class and we'll be sure to cover it in class. That concludes part one. Stay tuned for part two.